Hello, everyone, and welcome to the finals for the Lonely Draft League Z Move Division. We've got Thriller from the Iowa Jolteons versus DJS for the Bulky Dragons. I'm going to be on mic. I'm Regina Angley, along with the lovely and wonderful Joe Brown. What's up, Joe? Well, hello, Regina. Long time no see. Yes, I know. Well, the C part is 100% accurate. I think it's That's been about uh, four or five years at this point, honestly. <laughs> so, so the C part is correct. That part is 100% accurate, uh, but long time no talk. It's been uh, not even like 20 minutes. No, for sure. <laughs> and if anyone hasn't watched our other matchup we have here on the channel, you should make sure to check out uh, the channel and see our other VGC match that Regina and I cast the finals of there. But this, you know, last time we spoke, Regina, there was a, a Kyogre Rain team in a VGC finals for Lonely Draft League, and it looks like we're going to have the same scenario here. The difference is at least some of those Pokemon I definitely recognize um, in between the time that we were setting up the matches. I 100% did not Google um, the Thunderous Therian form. Of course not. Um, I just had, to do, just, just had to double check, you know, and be like, hey, I've seen this Pokemon before, just not in the style that it's in. Um, I will say Tapu Fini being on the screen for someone definitely gives me some pause because i am having muddy water flashback misses oh man 100 don't, don't get me started all right so i'll start i'll start the video and then uh we can just discuss as we're watching along and they're you know selecting their their team and stuff but uh this is the uh, fletchinder i actually i didn't even okay. see that until literally right oh, now really? okay yeah so we're, we're looking at djs's perspective right here with that calyx tapu fini scrafty and dd dust Noir, and fletchinder i think fletchinder is absolutely freaking hilarious um mostly because i am um, i'm having some some sort of memory recall in terms of a um <laughs> uh, yeah you, you know what you know, oh, you know, I, do. About oh now, I do oh i do yeah 100 okay cool um and then you know thriller with that kyogre team the scoliopede uh grim snarl the um the tor tornadus yeah tornado this Ethereum form, Metagross, and Sea King. Um, three of these Pokemon are not like the others that you usually see, and I'm kind of uh, excited about that. There was a moment when I went, I think Scoliopede gets Baton Pass, and then I got scared. Yes, it definitely, you know, it definitely does. And that is maybe something you could see, although usually Baton Pass is a lot more common in singles draft leagues, right? Where you actually have, you are able to do that. VGC is a lot of pressure early on in matchups don't, really don't let you just sit around and set up with different boosts and whatnot. Uh, so I think if the Scolipede is not going for Don, <laughs> but Tom Pass has got uh, something else in store. We've got that Kyogre that grows now. Uh, you know, a pair that you could probably see in general. And Calyx, 100% fine. It's totally okay. But <laughs> Flitchinder, this little bird is going to ruin somebody's day. And I can feel it in my bones. That, uh, uh, like, I'm hoping that this bird is going to ruin someone's day. I think it's a, a hilarious choice, actually. It, like, it's, uh, it's, yeah. It also doesn't have an item. Uh, Wait, really, <laughs> so I, I see the that. I see the acrobatics, and that would be why, uh, because acro ac acrobatics, excuse me, does double damage when you're not holding an item. So I guess this is a tactical item list Pokemon that you brought to the finals. Uh, that's a really <laughs> exciting idea. I don't know what Fletchinder does into Kyogre, but I'm very excited to find out gonna protect on this turn at least to be like hey um i don't want to take any damage right now and actually double protect here from both calyx and that fletchinder gonna make sure that any damage that happens this turn not gonna happen uh grim going for the fake out gonna target down into that protected calyx spot kyogre with the origin pulse obviously again not going to make any contact with these pokemon as they go for that protect gonna burn a turn of um of that rain at least and I, i'm seeing a seed bomb choice there i'm kind of in love with this what the heck is going on <laughs> that was a nice double protect because i would have thought that grimstar would go for reflect but because it went for fake out that double protect worked out really well well that tail one from fletching you're gonna make sure that that seed bomb from calyx goes in first <laughs> does so much damage to that kyogre with like this really this life warp here and origin pulse oh my god no, the fletching there said hey i'm gonna dodge this i'm like you know what acrobats doesn't even matter i'm fast enough to dodge this calyx gonna take the full brunt of that is still able to hold on though we know it's gonna be faster but darkless slayer yet now from grim's not gonna double down into that calyx is gonna be enough to pick up that knockout so you know what this uh this calyx is going down but not without doing some significant damage into that Kyogre, is it a worth it trade? Especially seeing both Tapu Fini and Dustmar in the back. I, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see. <laughs> this Fletchinder is an absolute Chad right now. Sets up Tailwind, <laughs> dodges Origin Pulse. Like, what a stud of a Pokemon to be facing down the 
legendary, like in these legendary, you know, GS Cups, you know, series 12 formats we have where we allow legendaries oh, into dear. VGC, it's Kyogre and it's Groudon. And to be out here against uh. the legendary, <laughs> knocking it out is incredible. Yep, that Fletcher showing the acrobatics, like you said, does more damage when you're not having that item. Here, going to be able to pick up that knockout on uh, that Kyogre. And Moonblast from Tapu Fini going to go into that Grim Snow. But uh, I think that's a Roselli Berry that I just saw activate here. Going to make sure that that Grim Snow is able to hang around. Does get the special attack drop, though, with that, um, with, sorry, with the, oh, uh, oh my god, the, the Moonblast and power of Tapu Fini saying, hey, it's your turn to miss the moves, not me this time. DJS, with, you know, the nimble team out here <laughs> dodging these uh, attacks. I do like the Roselia Berry that you touched on. Obviously, it's a different scenario than if you're going to a tournament. You probably wouldn't bring Roselia Berry uh, for an entire field of hundreds of VGC players, but the best parts about Draft League is you are counter-teaming for your specific matchup in this final spot, so you know the Tapu Fini is coming. You can bring that and take the resisted damage. All right, Grim Snow saying, hey, I'm going to peace out on this turn. Metagross coming into play. It's going to take an acrobatics from that Fletcher. Just barely even moves that HP bar here. This Tapu Fini with this legendary Muddy Water. Oh, gonna miss. no. Please, you're going to be surprised that, that Muddy Water missed a single Pokemon. But Metagross actually going to be able to hit into that is going to get it down to under half health. And because of that rain from earlier, to, uh, this uh, Hurricane is going to be 100% accurate. That Metagross, though, took a lot of damage in on that switch. It just brings me back. Ne terrible memories are our, our good friend Gabby Schneider, who I named my Tapu Fini at for a regional. I named my Groudon Regina, and I named my Tapu Fini Gabby, and they missed like more than half of their Muddy Waters and Precipice Blades throughout the entire regional. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! Did you see what just happened? <laughs> the Will okay. Wisness? Oh, but no, the will o -Wisp doesn't happen because of we're on terrain. Oh, that's he, right. He, he sets up his own, they set up their own terrain, went for the mud. You know, it doesn't even matter because Tapafinia at least hit the one Pokemon that it should have to pick up that knockout. It's going to take more damage from um, that hurricane. But what what a thing, right? Like, this is actually one of those uh, mechanics that really kind of irked me a little bit when um, Sword and Shield first came out. Was like, It's really difficult sometimes to see the terrain it's on the field. It's very hard. Yeah, uh, whereas I, I it's on the 3DS it. era... It was like right in your face and it was like you couldn't miss it and if you did that was really your own fault at that point um but here it's like i think i could i would have possibly made the same mistake at some point i would have clicked a wisp on the train I, I i do also like uh you know the uh the, per the perspective from the other end, Grimstar coming in and only frisking one item because <laughs> the Fletcher isn't holding an item it only sees Tapu Fini's Wakanberry. that's really funny to me for some reason it just, yeah, it's like, yep, no, no touchy here. And uh, double protect again as that Grimstar goes for a fake out into that Tapu Fini. Tornadus revealing its other um, flying type move, going to be the air slash into that Fletchinger. I, I would like to also point out this Fletchinger has done, has taken zero damage <laughs> at all since it's come in. I just, it, it's setting up Tailwind and protecting and acrobatting. Like, that's wild. I mean, it's a stud. What else can I say? It's it's hanging out with legendaries like Tapu Fini and Kyogre and Tornadus and. You know, even Grimmsnarl is really strong, and it's just it's just chilling, chilling with everyone else, getting another Tailwind. So, uh, you know, you don't see VGC matches lasting long enough to set up two Tailwinds usually, but we do have it in this spot. Yeah, and it really helps out that type of video because it's going to be able to pick up that knockout on that Grimmsnarl. No Roselli Berry this time to weaken that damage here. Grimmsnarl going to go down on this turn. Tornadus is going to be able to land that Air Slash into that type of Fini, pick up that knockout, um, and Fletchinger still has taken zero damage, which I find absolutely fantastic. There's these two birds on the field, but, you know, Fletchinger's got a partner ready to come in, uh, that Dust Noir, so uh, going to try to spook their opponent out a little bit. Yeah, Dust Snore. Usually we would see Dust Clops taken more in VGC, right? As Frisk as well. But you'd assume with a draft league, maybe the DJS didn't have enough points allotted for Dust Clops or somebody else drafted it, you know, potentially snipe picked it before and had to sit on the Dust Snore. But the benefit is Dust Snore is a lot more offensive capabilities than Dust Clops is. Uh, a lot stronger without the Shadow Punch or even a lot of coverage moves, the different elemental punches and things. Uh, so this is a nice spot where if you have the... Th uh, thunder punch you can reveal it for tornadoes yeah what's what's fascinating too is i feel like um i, I know we were joking and laughing about it a lot but that fletcher is actually kind of a big threat because gill wings is an ability even though it sort of got 
uh, I want to say nerfed a little bit after X and Y. It's still something that you should like, you know, take seriously because if you're somehow, able, yeah, if you're somehow able to like not get that speed control, then at least being able to stop that Gale Wings from popping off would be nice. And so Fletcher, you're gonna get the acrobatics down into that um, tornado. Is gonna take some damage from that uh, air slash finally, as Thunder Punch not quite enough to pick up the knockout here on Tornadoes, but this game is basically wrapped up. Oh, for sure. And that, that's a good point to bring up Regina about how Fletchinder spent that whole game at full HP, so it did have the priority on its flying type moves like Tailwind and Acrobatics the entire time. Because obviously, usually Tornadus would be faster than a Fletchinder, but with the priority, it was able to just be so effective, you know, how much of uh, X and Y or, you know, maybe even parts of Sun and Moon do we see where priority Tailwind from Talonflame was really problematic, so... Uh, that's just what Flint Fletchinger does on an even smaller, cuter role, being the the tinier Talonflame with the same ability. And see, it's it's kind of fun too, though, because when it comes to meta evolutions, a lot of the times your meta evolutions are sort of forgotten. So it's kind of cool seeing Fletchinger there. I think. I, I think it would have been awesome maybe to see it hold an item, consume it, and then get the acrobatics like right. damage as well. Um, but that's just me, like, you know, wishful thinking at this point. Yeah, like the good old Gen 5 days with the, the Dragon Gem, Flying Gen, Dark Gems and stuff where you... Uh, especially with, with, you know, the, the genies there, like you have flying gem and then it activates and then because you're not holding an item, then acrobatics does even more damage. Uh, so that was, that was crazy back in the day. But for now, I do wonder what thrillers options are against the Fletch Ender. It's not that it's really a huge problem because it's just outputting so much pressure or it's tough to knock out. Obviously it's a, it's a, you know, middle evolution Pokemon there. So it's not like. Uh, it's not too, it's middle, right? Or is it middle or beginning? Is it it's the middle. first one? Yeah. It's no, no, no. You're thinking, you're thinking, um, Fletchling. Okay, cool. So it is middle. So it's not fully evolved. So it's not like it's crazy tanky and it's not holding Eviolate. The problem is the utility it's providing DJS's team here to let Tapu Fini, you know, safely attack with the super effective Moonblast faster and everything else. To let the Calyrex be faster and, you know, attack the different things. That's the problem. So uh, you do have some options on Thriller's Ends that can, that can hit it, but... For sure, you need to break that Gale Wings. You need to get Fletchinger off of its 100% HP so it loses its priority flying type moves. All right, uh, Kyogre and Scolipede are going to be the Pokemon lead of choice here. So Grim's now taking a backseat on the turn of Scrafty and Dustmar. So a bit of a lead change from both sides. Kyogre's Drizzle going to activate, so we are going to get that rain back. We didn't see Kyogre be able to do much last game because, you know, it took in a ton of damage from a Seed Bomb. And from um, that acrobatics, but Scrafty Intimidate, uh, not going to matter at all for that Kyogre, because it's just going to click Origin Pulses and be like, ah, I don't care if you knock down my attack stage. Uh, Dustnor actually frisked the Choice Scarf on Kyogre, which is a huge Ooh. reveal. Uh, a lot more than what the Grimmsnarl got the last time, which was it was holding no item. This time you now know that this Kyogre is really fast and a super fast Origin Pulse that could potentially knock out your Pokemon is not what you want to see in turn one. So the fake out definitely makes a lot of sense. I do remember seeing an, an expert belt at some point, which is going to come into play here. Uh, does a lot of damage into that dust. Uh, Scrafty, they're going to be able to stop that Kyogre. However, uh, unable to stop the Trick Room. So Dust Noir went, hey, you know what? We're going to make sure the slowest Pokemon will go first. So you know what's going to be? Go for those speed boosts. Like it's going to, they're going to happen in the turn no matter what. It's going to work against you. This is truly a moment you hate to see. A Scolipede with speed boost, and it, it did have the uh, expert belt, that's why Throat Shop did so much. And then a Choice Scarf Kyogre in Trick Room, this is problematic. Oh, and Scrafty gonna be able to go first with those Rock Slides, so we are we might potentially see a double uh, Rock Slide finish here. Kyogre I'm gonna take that Thunder Punch still. Uh, able to, at, oh gosh, yikes. Oh yeah, yeah, is able to <laughs> at least not flinch and lands one origin pulse. It's these water type moves, I'm telling you. Creates a uh, critical hit in return on that Scrafty. Scoliopede though, gonna get flinched on that rock slide. You know, when there's a rock, where there's a flinch, there's a way. No, for sure, definitely. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is just really nice spot for djs you already have the kyogre really low trick room is still up for the next three turns at this point so the best option for thriller is to switch kyogre out uh, by the time you can get it in late game when trick room is gone maybe your rain is already you know went away so you can reset up rain you do have your choice scarf to use at that point and this time around frisk actually being more valuable showing uh showing two items 
Yeah, so we're gonna show that assault vest and that focus sash. So another double rock side here. Poltergeist from ooh, uh, Poltergeist from that Dustmar gonna use that expert belt against that Scoliopede as already at low health is gonna get knocked out. I think that's three critical hits in a row that I've seen in this game alone. I have seen that red text pop up so many times at this point. Grimmsnarl comes in basically unscathed except for that rock slide. Um, and Tornado's gonna make its appearance on the field here so that they're in form once more. Uh, but honestly, like these two Pokemon uh, have kind of just been driving this train. Driving this train car? Either way. We'll go with it. Either way. Uh, at this point, there are two turns in Trick Room left, and the Grimmsnarl can't fake out the Dustnor, so you might as well not even go for it. Oh, yeah. It was crafty, you know, able to hit at least one, so maybe you can at least get a flinch on the Grimmsnarl, but Therian, uh, the Therian form avoiding that is, like, huge because of that super effective damage. Grimmsnarl taking that burn. Uh, Darkest Lair from Grimmsnarl gonna go down into that Dust Noir. Gonna try to take care of it in case, it, you know, those trick moves expire and you don't want to get it up again. Hurricane, 100% accurate here, is gonna be able to pick up that knockout on that Scrafty. No more having to worry about that Rock Slide and crossing your fingers and hoping you don't see uh, flinched and couldn't move. And that's the synergy in draft leagues that you love to see in team building is Kyogre setting up the rain, which allows Tornadus to have 100% accurate hurricanes. Wouldn't be surprised if Thriller, you know, took Torn and, and Kyogre in, you know, either its first, second, third pick, some type of synergy like that. Because that's really where your high point value Pokemon are in draft leagues are really where you need to get a lot of production out of. So now that Trick Room is about to end soon, uh, Tornadus has to be cautious for one more turn as this Calyrex can hit it super effectively with the strong Glacial Lance. And no protects or anything like that as that Thunder Punch goes into that Tornadus as long as Glacial Lance does not miss either Pokemon. This is going to be a clean knockout on both of them. So Calyrex is going to be able to hit, the, I think it's like the first spread move I've seen hit both, but oh no, sorry, the Rock Sides did hit both at one point, but gets a double knockout. And even more terrifyingly, is going to be able to get those double boosts because of those two knockouts. Chilling Nay is honestly, That's yeah, huge. like every time yeah. it's, it's really is like uh, I, I hate to say this, but it really is a chilling thing to see. Like in all honesty, because it's just like that that sort of power boost that you get is phenomenal. It's also just unfortunate timing for Thriller, as that was the last turn of both Rain and Trick Room. So if the Tornadus maybe it didn't have Protect in its setup there, if it had Protect, you would have been able to stall out one more turn, then you get the Rain, your Choice Scarf Kyogre, and you have your 100% accurate Hurricanes. But because you didn't, you got hit by two super effective attacks, and that double knockout is just gonna is just gonna seal it up for DJS. It's just a well played game just to rub some salt into the wound Kyogre unable to hit that Calyrex with Origin Pills. Not that I was going to do anything really, but you know, you, you kind of just hate to see it anyway and be like, ah, well, if this didn't like guarantee it before, it, it absolutely did now is that Seed Bomb is going to be more than enough to take care of what little health that Kyogre had. Um, it, honestly, I think this was this game was kind of just entertaining in a lot of ways to watch just because a lot of those spread moves would only hit one Pokemon. Right, absolutely. And then just, you know, want to point out real quick if I can see it as we get the, the cards back. If you see the title of the video, is Can I Finally Beat Kyogre? And for GJS. The answer is spoiler alert. Yes. The answer is yes. Congratulations on uh, the Bulky Dragons winning season five of the LDL Z Move League. So uh, that was a really impressive 2 0, honestly. Like, uh, at all points in game one, Fletchinder. Uh, and Tapu Fini and Calyrex were really in control. S game two, straight off the jump in on turn one, the fake out trick room really set him up for success there. So, an in, you know, incredibly well played set by DJS to to be the champion this season. Yeah, uh, I also wanted to mention this when we were going into team preview for game two. Um, DJS just locked in immediately. Like I barely even got to see what they were going to bring. I just remember seeing the team preview and then all of a sudden we're in the waiting room waiting for the other person to finish their team selection. And I went, oh my gosh, like so just hopped in knowing their game two plan. And I think it paid off in dividends. Like seeing the whole, hey, trick room and rock side, rock side, rock side, just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, also, just you know, just looking through the dock right now, looking at some different tabs in the standings, the Bulky Dragons, so GGS's team, they were eight and one in the regular season. So it's not like this hey. was some fluke. This is a very, very well constructed 
actually on a seven game win streak to end the uh, the end of the season. Well constructed, well drafted, well played team from DJS. So for them to have the best record in the regular season and then convincingly win in the finals, like definitely shows that this is a, a well deserved championship. Yeah, imagine going X one and anything can't be me. <laughs> it can't be me. I couldn't. I couldn't even yeah. do it with six legendaries, and this guy does it with Fletchinder. Oh, it's amazing, Fletchinder MVP. Like absolutely, <laughs> right now. I love this. This is great. But that that was very fun. Yeah. So thank you, Regina, for joining me here uh, and with our other VGC matchup. So if anyone didn't watch the other league that Regina and I got to cast together, make sure you like and subscribe and check out our channel to watch up that other matchup. We also have our other leagues that will have their finals uploaded or our other divisions, I should say, within the Lonely Draft League. Uh, so that is going to do it for us here. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's been it's been a fun couple of VGC sets, and it's always enjoyable to be with Regina. But for now, we will see you next season. Bye.